Oh my goodness, you guys. Norwex is one of the most generous companies that I've ever encountered when it comes to direct sales and the fact that they allow us to host our own parties and also have the opportunity to earn free product. So now what? What do you do with all of the free product that you can earn? I have a management system for my inventory that I'd like to share with you. My name is Melissa Detmer and I'm a vice president sales leader with Norwex. And I, over several years, have figured out a way to manage the free product and even purchase product that comes uh, in boxes to my home and then how I use it to grow my business, whether I give it away for free or whether I sell it and make income off of it. So that's what I'm going to share with you today is my inventory management system and how to use it to grow your business. Okay, what do you do with the free product? First, I'm going to talk about how to actually physically organize it um, logistically. So you get a box, woohoo, the UPS man shows up, it comes to your house. Where do you do it? So where do you, what do you do with it? So you open it up and then let me tell you what I do. I have a, a place that I put it. So this can be uh, Rubbermaid tubs, this can be shelving, this can be uh, drawers, this can be the actual Norwex boxes. Um, but the key is you wanna keep it in a pet-free zone, a smoke-free zone, and also dust-free zone. Um, and in my home, I don't have pets or smoke, but dust is a problem. So I like to keep it in a, a tub or in drawers. Having it out on shelves is great, but it just depends on your environment and what works best for you. Now, it's important that you have everything labeled. Um, you can do these. Uh, sometimes, you know, the, the, the container is big enough for several items. So you can have it sorted by themes or categories. Maybe if you look at the Norwex catalog, you can see, you know, this is like household items or personal care items. Or for me, I have all my liquids in one. I have all my laundry detergent in one. I have all my um, en enviro cloths and window cloths and dry, like bamboo cloths, those kind of things in one container so that I know where they are. Now, then I have them labeled. So I have a label maker or you can write it with a Sharpie or however you want to do it. Um, and this can change over time um, depending on the things that you have, like, you know, bath towels or body cloths all in one, uh, kids items. So they can be sorted into different things in uh, different categories. But it's important to have them labeled so you know exactly what box or shelf to put them on uh, as soon as you get it. So you get the box, you open it up, and you put it on that shelf. Um, everything, like that old saying goes, everything has a place and everything in its place. It's very important in order to stay organized with this system. Um, then, or right before you put it away, it's an it's really good idea to have some kind of tracking system. Now, I have used several different versions of this. Um, one of the things that I used to do was I would track it in a spreadsheet, and I just use Google Sheets um, just to keep it simple. But I've also used a system called Cheddar Up. That's C H E D D A R U P, CheddarUp.com. And I had an account first. I started with the free version, and then I started. Then I moved up to um, a monthly fee because I use that as my inventory tracking system. There's so many systems out there that you you can use, but the reason why I chose Cheddar Up was because I could have then turn it into a way to sell those products to my my customers. I'll get to that in just a little bit. Okay, so um, I did an inventory count twice a year, usually January first ish, and then also. Um, July 1st is when I did that. So I would go through and I would count everything. Different people do different things. Sometimes uh, that could be a whole other training, but you can just go into your catalog and just count how many. Um, I'm going to, um, in order like to track these things, how detailed and not detailed you get is really going to be up to you and your um, accountant um, or your the person that gives you tax advice. But I'm not going to get into that because I do that for personal reasons so that I can keep up with my inventory. Um, this is a way for me to keep up with my incoming and outgoing uh, products that I have gotten for free. Let me just say this though. You do not have to track your inventory in order to be successful with this, but this is what I did in order to manage such a large volume 
um, of porch pickup items and then also my inventory sale that I'm going to talk about in just a little bit. Okay, so how? what are some ways that you can use free products? You can, as you get lots of free products, let's say you have um, EnviroCloths, window cloths, and dusting mitts, you can create a try before you buy kit. There's trainings on that. Um, you can either, in order to do this, you can either use uh, give them something that is used, and I would use the, you know, the, the Norwex bags. I would put it in those recyclable bags. Um, I would put those items and then I would hand it to them and it could either be used and they return it to me. Then if they choose to buy that product, then I will gift them with, or I would give them a new product or have it shipped to them. Or you can go ahead and give them the new product and if they love it, then they keep it um, and pay for that. Other ideas are booking gifts, uh, host gifts, customer appreciation gifts, uh, giveaways at vendor events and networking events. Um, a lot of times people, if they ha do, are doing home parties, they'll have a hundred dollar basket um, or, uh, and those can be at vendor events or home parties, or you could do like a spend, that's more like a, a spend and get. So let's say that they spend a hundred or they spend 125 or whatever it is. I would break up packs um, and like say the travel and viral cloths or um, things that weren't necessarily selling um, my top sellers, things that are add-ons, a lot of those consumables. Um, you could also use those little travel things that sometimes we get for free. Those are great things to put in that basket. You could do gift with purchase for online parties, uh, and also giveaways for online parties. Let's say there's a prize for whatever task that you have them do, or maybe just you draw a name. Um, you can also use those products for samples. So you can cut the Enviro cloths and the window cloths or use the roller cutters for, for online parties to send samples. You can also, one idea is that I love to gift my elementary school teachers with the little travel Enviro cloths or even samples so that, so that they could use those in the classroom for every child. And, um, or you could give them things that they can use in their classroom, things that you got for free. Okay, now let's transition to how to sell those products in order to make money. Um, one thing you have to keep in mind is if you earned it for free and then you turn around and sell it, you're actually making whatever you sell it for. So um, it's okay, at least in my, my opinion, I would discount those items in my inventory sale because I'm making that amount. Um, I've done a training on my 12 days of Christmas. So go back in the Go Green team and you can actually see the 12 days of Christmas training that I did. Um, I think it was for November of 2021, I believe. Um, I have a whole system that I did for that, but I also do that. And that's why I'm telling you guys this today is because I also would do a Christmas in either June or July. Now, let me tell you why I do June or July. If I was trying to track points in order to earn a trip, and let's say that I had met my goal. I would try to do my my inventory sale in June because then July 1st, I would want to start earning points again um, through the Norwex system. And I wanted to decrease my inventory in June. However, if I was tracking points and I needed more points in June because the cutoff is usually July 1st, then I would do my inventory sale in July. So it kind of just depends on what you want to do, but it is a strategy towards um, towards uh, trip points or maybe goals that you've set for um, rewards or things like that. Um, another big business I had um, in the Dallas, Texas area was I was doing, I had a huge porch pickup um, system and I would use Cheddar Up in order to track my inventory and then be able to put that, um, uh, they would pay for it online and then they, I would just put it out on the porch in a bag and, uh, and put it in like a Rubbermaid tub on my porch and they could do a porch pickup. That was really big during the COVID season, um, for masks, for hand sanitizer and for just Enviro cloths in general. But I sold a lot of other things too on, um, with porch pick pickup. Um, a lot of local customers um, and other things that you can sell. You can sell your products in vendor events. There's trainings on that. Um, you can do uh, uh, car pickup line sales. So like arrange to exchange something with a uh, with a, a friend of yours that is in car line with you um, or like, you know, someone buy something and then you meet them at, at, in the church parking lot or something, things, places where you're, you're going to go anyways. And then you sell products in your local community. 
Um, another idea is that uh, I used to go to a lot of networking groups and I would have a product of the day. So whatever product I needed to sell um, in my uh, from my inventory, I would try to do some kind of special on that, whether it was laundry detergent or microfiber cleaner or um, the netted dishcloths, things that, and I would just I would just feature one product a day and then I would do a sale on the first five. If I had five in my inventory, I would try to sell those five that day. So that is, um, those are some ideas for ways to use your, your, your free products that you got as gifts and then also to sell some of those products to make a little bit of extra income, but also to clear out your inventory because it could grow and grow and grow if, if you, you have more than, more than you would use personally. Um, one thing that you can do um, if you don't want to use Cheddar Up in order to keep the system going is to use the carbon copy of the uh, those receipts. And when you do, let's say that you decided to have an inventory sale and you wanted to do it on Facebook Live. Um, I have a friend who goes Facebook Live in her VIP group and she just shows the product and says how much it is. And then they have to comment uh, sold or comment, you know, F21 or whatever, she'd have a, a, a number on it or something. And then she would just write that, that item on a, and their name on the, on the receipt. And then they could pick it up that way. You could do that for your Christmas sale as well. And then what we, you would do in order to get payment is you would just send them the link to Venmo or PayPal uh, with their total. And then they would just, they would pay that way. So, or they can leave a check with you or cash or whatever, if you do porch pickup. So I have a, uh, I feel like I had when I was, uh, I actually live in my RV right now, so I'm not doing this system right now. Um, but when I had a, a place to, to put things um, in a box or Rubbermaid or shelves, um, this was my inventory management system. This is how I made money um, on my products. I moved my inventory year after year, and I hope that is helpful for you guys. And I hope that you will uh, comment below on uh, different ideas that you want to share with other people or different ideas that you've used or questions that you have um, so that we can encourage encourage one another to uh, use the free product that Norwex gives us in order to build our businesses. Bye-bye.